gas exchange in insects is slightly different from gas exchange in mammals. Right, we're going to start off just by talking about some of the key structures and some of the key bits that we find within a gas exchange system in insects. To start off, we've got spiracles. Right, spiracles are just long holes that go and lead to the outside of the abdomen of the insect. Those spiracles lead down into tracheal tubes, right? All tracheal tubes are long tubes that are going and running throughout the insect, right? These tracheal tubes are held open by rings of chitin, right? They almost act in a very, very similar way to the C-shaped rings of cartilage in the trachea. They're there to go and ensure that these tracheal tubes don't go and collapse. The tracheal tubes run down into smaller tracheoles, which then go into air sacs. The air sacs within an insect are really important because that's where an insect can go and change the pressure of the air inside of it. When the abdomen contracts, that will go and contract the air sacs. As the air sacs contract, that increases the pressure in them. When the abdomen relaxes, the air sacs can have less pressure on them and less force on them, so the pressure decreases. So, in terms of how gas exchange in an insect takes place. Right, if we're talking about moving air into the insect, the reason this it needs to move air in is because the insect still needs oxygen for respiration. So, first thing is that the abdomen relaxes. As it relaxes, that causes a decrease in the pressure pushing on the air sacs. So the air sacs pressure decreases. This means that the pressure outside of the insect is now greater than inside, so air can start moving into the insect. So the air moves in through the spiracles, into the air sacs, through the tracheal tubes. As it's moving through the tracheal tubes, the oxygen can go and diffuse out into the hemolymph, which is liquid surrounding them, which will then allow the oxygen to go and pass to the cells of the insect in order for it to be used in mitochondria for the process of respiration. When we're talking about getting rid of carbon dioxide, the exact opposite happens. So the insect goes and contracts its abdomen. This increases the pressure on the air sacs, so the pressure in them increases, which goes and forces the air back out. One last thing to go and talk about that we didn't mention before is how an insect goes and prevents SX water locks while it's breathing. There are a few ways to do this. For a start, it's got an exoskeleton that's impervious to water, so it doesn't lose water through its skin. And the spiracles are specially designed to help prevent water loss. So if we looked inside of one of these spiracles, it would have tiny hairs in it. Those tiny hairs would help keep the inside of those spiracles moist, and stop the water from exiting so that the insect didn't become dehydrated. So that is a brief overview, so a brief summary of some of the key points involved in ventilation within insects.